good morning to you all my name is praveen gedam i uh, i was the mission director of uh, india's uh, digital health mission and uh, it is locally known as ayushman bharat digital mission now the importance of digital health i i we need not talk among this uh, crowd but it was actually not felt very seriously strongly prior to covid and covid was an era at least in india when things have really started uh, Uh, getting pushed towards digital side including particularly in the teleconsultation uh, network and it was during uh, this covid pandemic that the government of india launched uh, ayushman bharat digital mission we will call it just a digital mission or india's digital mission uh, for for sake uh, uh, for sake of convenience now there are couple of issues one is uh, adoption of digital health is developing country is less compared to the developed country it is not as bad mind well we have laboratories radiology centers registration billing discharge summaries uh, already digitized in in significant number of hospitals the problem lies in uh, op setting outpatient and inpatient so these things are being pushed by the government right now by uh, bringing in more and more user friendly cloud based multi tenant kind of uh, hmis now this is one part of the story the other part is how do you ensure the interoperability between these disparate system so uh, india's health ecosystem is extremely fragmented so we have like a federal government nearly 30 state governments hundreds of local government and then huge private sector which contributes to almost two third of healthcare and tens of thousands of players in private sector so we literally have thousands of uh, digital health systems running on different platforms by different companies and the challenge was to or is to bring in interoperability between all these uh, systems it is probably possible in a smaller setup smaller countries to have a unified systems like estonia has done a fantastic job but that cannot be the test case for india so we have to have a solution which works in indian context so we have uh, several types of systems for hospitals laboratories health programs health lockers of the patients and on and for different governments and different uh, private entities the abdm uh, that's uh, that, that that's the logo of abdm brings in the connectivity between all of these without creating a central data repository so there is a there are i mean it's a different uh, it will the talk will go in a different direction but in brief there is a health information exchange at the center which is managed by the government and all these different systems they get integrated with this health information exchange and the health information exchange has an information about health ids the unique digital identity for every single uh, indian all hospitals and labs the facilities and healthcare professionals like doctors and nurses and it has a digital consent manager which uh, ensures that the data flows only after verifying that the controller of the data that is the patient has given the consent and the consent is for a particular purpose for which the data is being sought so that's how the uh, schematic uh, uh, representation of abdm looks like uh, if one goes into the stack the abdm has been built on india's common digital public goods there is something known as aadhar that is uh, we have biometrics uh, 10 fingerprints iris and face and demographic details of 1.4 billion indians at a very secure place so this health id and other ids are built on the top of these uh, horizontal cross domain uh, digital public goods and then we have created uh, health registries health ids and several apis through which all these thousands of uh, disparate digital system gets integrated and there is a deliberate uh, design that 
the government has not stated that you shall use X system or X type of system. That freedom is left to users, whatever system they want to use. So in this uh, bottom, uh, these uh, digital public goods, whatever may be the type of system it is, these are end user applications, health ser service provider application, personal health record of whatever type you can integrate and this top layer can also be used if somebody desires for analytics and it is at this stage we started i mean i2b2 approached uh, the government of india and then we started considering how this can be taken forward so uh, in brief what we have done is we have brought in interoperability also pushing the uh, adoption of digitization the use of adop uh, digitization and as one of the additional tracks in interoperability started thinking about uh, analytics of the data. The immediate use case which we have demonstrated on the ground is to create a longitudinal digital health record of any patient which can fetch kind of uh, records from disparate systems, bring at one place and displays it to the healthcare provider. So, uh, sorry. This is a hypothetical patient. Her record is in eight or nine different digital silos. And because of this uh, connectivity, her longitudinal health record is created, which she can see on her phone and can present to the healthcare providers. But now we have to go a stage ahead. Like uh, digital, uh, it's a kind of crime. If you like just sit on millions of records, without analyzing them for research and public health purpose. So I2B2 has given that kind of uh, construct which allows this data to be uh, pulled together and analyzed. So here I have shown two hypothetical systems. Let us call them system A and system B from which we can pull the data, do the analytics for research purpose but while maintaining the privacy and security and addressing those very valid concerns. Going further, can we also think of a situation where the anonymized aggregated data is presented as a kind of a, a common knowledge to every public health researcher, clinical, clinical researcher, and anybody who wants to do analysis and study? So this knowledge can be shared on a common platform, on a national platform, for anybody to come forward, do research analysis, and it will also have a lot of public health implications. For example, realization of kind of different types of syndromic trends, or diseases, or antimicrobial resistance, which one can understand and then take suitable action. So, and, even beyond that, once this is done, once we have enough data, can we also think of developing clinical decision support systems which uh, can run because of the data, the engines getting fine-tuned, the AI and ML becoming better and better, and uh, this can feed into different uh, HMIS as a completing that loop which will further help the uh, healthcare providers on the ground. So this is the concept of how we can think of integrating data analytics with the overall uh, digital health ecosystem of the country. Uh, I'll conclude by telling you some basic facts. So far, we have provided health ID to 242 million Indians. Uh, uh, around 148,000 uh, healthcare facilities have been onboarded. Healthcare professionals, uh, around 50,000. Uh, this 980 is the number of digital health systems which are in the process of getting integrated. More than 50 have completed integration. This is a recent initiative. Like was launched in 2020, initial one or uh, 12 months or 18 months were spent in framing policies and deciding platform. And uh, around uh, seven, uh, 700,000 health record applications have been downloaded by various citizens in their mobile phones. So this is the progress so far. And if there are any questions, we'll be happy to address that. Thank you.
no right now i2 b2 is working separately with 10 or 15 different hospitals directly and that was going on even i mean separately and independent of what we were doing in the government of india now they have uh, approached the government stating that maybe if we can shake hands together we can go to the broader p uh, ma broader uh, audience simultaneously so that is a thing which is under discussion right now so that i2b2 is already in progress for around 15 different big hospitals but 15 hospitals will not be like uh, good enough if we really want to have good impact so we are thinking of how do we can expand our tentacles and uh, take this to maybe 1000 hospitals 2000 hospitals so there are a couple of uh, hmis which are used in government uh, which are used in 800 and 900 hospitals each so we are now uh, thinking of how to integrate into those so that in one go we can have like thousands of hospitals thank you so much <laughs>